Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and we are here for part two of our budget build series for Rakdos Sacrifice. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with this series we do on the channel, basically, basically build three variants of a deck, um, starting with a budget version, 10 or fewer rare mythic wild cards, mid-budget, which is where we're on now, which is both uh, between 10 and 20, and then uh, the non-budget, which is the fully optimized version. Uh, the intent of the deck is to get as much uh, kind of progress for newer players, but also just as you're accumulating wild cards, and kind of give you a guide of like plug and play, like cheaper cards you can put in for the meantime. Um, so what we have here is the mid budget. So we already played the budget version, um, but the core of the deck is basically around sacrificing your stuff for value, um, primarily around the witches, uh, like the cat oven combo. You sack your cat to the oven, you get a food, you bring back the cat, and then you loop it like that. Paired with Mayhem Devil, lets you machine gun down opponent's things, and then Midnight Reaper draws you cards. So of note, for this version here, what we are adding in is in total 10 rares. Uh, we have four Priests of the Forgotten Gods, a uh, very powerful card if it goes unchecked. Uh, if you untap with it, you can usually take over the game. But basically, uh, with Priest, you sacrifice any other two creatures. And then your opponent loses two life and sacrifices a creature. You add two black mana to your mana pool and draw a card. Um, and then we added two Tyramet Calls of the Dead. This uh, gives us zombies to sacrifice for priest, fills our graveyard, and then um, it kind of hits us with more cats or more woe striders. Um, so it kind of pairs with that nicely. And then we added four Fable Passages. Uh, this improves our mana base. We don't have awkward to come into play tap lines. But also when we can sacrifice a Fabled Passage with the Mayhem Devil, it can deal a damage as well. So kind of a consideration there. Um, so it's not the fully optimized version. We're still missing Croxa and a couple improvements to the mana base and just truing up some of these numbers. But it's a, a move in the right direction. Uh, sideboard remains intact. Uh, the only note that we made from the budget version is we added some Noxious Grasps in. But basically your red matchup, uh, your control matchups, your big creature matchups, uh, noxious grass for red or, or green or white, like your Nisa matchups, uh, shield breaker to destroy artifacts, dragon fire is a nice exile effect, and then Farika's liberation versus like fires and stuff. Um, so the same way, we're going to play a couple matches with the deck, uh, just play traditional play for now. I'll play in ranked with the non-budget uh, version, we can play like that. Um, so we'll fire it up. So once I've done this, I will play the non-budget version, uh, get that through, and then you'll have the full kind of view from the start to finish with those. Um, if I have some time as well, I will put together some words on Aether Hub, put together a quick article highlighting my thoughts on the deck, decisions, stuff like that, and we can take it from there. Uh, I'll keep this hand. Um, and then uh, if you have any other suggestions, decks you'd like to see on the channel, everything like that, uh, do let me know if you prefer more historic content or standard content right now. Um, I've been really liking historic, so it's something that if there is genuine interest, I'd be happy to con continue to add to that. Um, so Footlight Fiend is something that comes out in the main, like in the final version, but was really the reason that we bet mono red with the budget deck. Uh, this could be Golgari food. Could be one of these Sultai variants going around. Joke's on you, opponent. We didn't have good cards in hand. So, kind of wanted the Mayhem Devil. So Meyer Triton works nice with Tyramet because it adds more things to the graveyard to exile afterwards. Um, so we do have a claim here. So I'm actually going to attack in first. This might get them to respond by killing something. And then I'll play the Midnight Reaper. Because what would happen here is they may kill in response or they'll kill the Midnight Reaper. So next turn is probably just Bloodfell Caves and then depending if they play out something. Okay, so the Assassin's Trophy, that's fine. Um, gonna probably just get another, doesn't really matter, we could just get Red Source and draw a card. Perfect. So, let's 
So Pelucranos. Pelucranos is interesting. So we can't claim it because it's three or less. So I think I'm just going to do this. It's kind of a free attack. So if I just attack with this, they're not going to trade. If they do this, then they have still three power. But if this fights, then it kills it that way. Let's attack with both. If they want to block, it draws us a card. This Footlight Fiend's not doing much in this matchup. Um, just probably to the face. They're at 13 life. Okay, so that's pretty good. If we had one more mana open... You know, probably given that, I shouldn't have played the Bloodfell Caves. We could have played Priest, Untapped, and then done that. Okay, so the Murderous Rider here. Okay, so we have Woe Strider. So I'm not going to play out the Priest yet, because it gives them uh, something to fight right away. I'm going to use the Priest next turn when I can give it haste. So let's just play Timeret here. It gives me a zombie. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we exile. So now I got enough like token fodder. I can always block and sack here and if they want to fight. But I want to keep Pelucranos a little hardy. Actually. So I can Mayhem Devil, or I can play a Priest. So I can steal the Murderous Rider, sack the Murderous Rider. If I attack in with two, four, nine. Yeah, we probably just do that. I'll take you. You come back. I want to deal damage to it because it makes it smaller. So they can still fight my priest, which I probably don't want to do. Honestly, just think we play out Woe Strider again. This will pop off on my upkeep so I could gain some life and scry. Oh, you know what? I needed to sack that. A little bit of misplay here. Hopefully it doesn't cost us. They have their own low strider. They're at two life. I can attack in, but they gain two life themselves. Which we probably just do anyways, because it forces them to trade their board. Yeah. So they're pretty dead there. I did make the mistake, because Murderous Rider gave them the opportunity. But we weren't too punished. Um... Probably just a Dragonfire matchup. I don't know if I want Grasp yet. 
like from what we saw, we saw Pelucranos, but we didn't see much more. Maybe. Because, like, this also exiles, like, their bigger stuff. Like, would they have Nisa? Probably. So what are we cutting? So Footlight Fiend doesn't seem particularly good in this matchup, and we could probably go down a claim. From what we saw, it wasn't too big, and the fact that they're going to have... You know, Angras Rampage is also kind of situational. So let's bring in... The grasps. Timerets, probably not the best here either. They're probably going to bring something like Cry Carnarium in, is my guess. So we can bring that in. We'll bring the Remorse. And bring the full Remorse in and just go down to Noxious Grasp. Play it out like that. Playing a bit of a fringe deck, so not too sure exactly what they're on. Just closing my window. Sorry for the close up. Low Strider was a nice addition to the deck. An unconditional sack outlet was something that these decks generally felt like they missed. So just being aggressive there, they didn't really... Yeah, this hand's not going to work out. We'll keep this one. I think we just go Mire Triton away. Did we not put you at the bottom? likely welcome some removal. It does walk us into a Cryocarnarium, which kind of sucks. If they have it, they don't. Also of note here, they're missing double black. So depending if they play out like Pelucranos or something, I think I want to keep this open. Mayhem Devil out, it would have triggered there, we would have got some value. Looks like removal spell. Yep, that's fine. Okay, cool. Um, I think we just go Meyer trade in here. both. So the thing is I probably fetch here, like we do lose a point of damage because then we'd find our fourth land even if it comes to play tapped I can still play Woe Strider but kind of opens us up because they're probably going to play this out this turn I can steal it and then sack it to the Woe Strider. Leyline Prowler. So this is just like a Golgari style deck. Um, I'm probably gonna go double red here. Perfect. So this lets us do this. Steal this and then sack it. Actually, my sequencing is a little bad there because they can now respond to kill this. Okay, so if they had a kill spell, they could have hit us. I 
And I'm just trying to put enough pressure on them that it doesn't really matter what they do where I have them dead. Because now next turn I could just sack my board to the Mayhem Devil and then kill them that way there. Their play might just be... Yeah, I guess this is just the upside of ramping. I never like Leyline Prowler. Ramp on three is just bad. You're better off playing Paradise Druid. And then like it has the lifelink and death touch, but if you're blocking with it, then what's the point of it? You're not ramping. Sweet. So took that one down. Uh, let me just give it a quick restart. And then we'll go. It's having a bit of computer issues yesterday just with streaming, so I'm just giving it kind of a, a chance to reset the client each time. Uh, helps things out a bit. Man, I had that window open just for like five minutes to get some fresh air and it's like frigid in here. All right, so we'll play out another one with this, see how it goes. So I'm just doing two matches of each. Normally I go for about an hour with each deck, but because we're playing the same kind of archetype over three builds, I'm gonna space them out and just give you probably about six matches entirety uh, across the series, which gives you kind of hopefully a nice sample across. Uh, we bet mono red, we lost a uh, bant mid ramp. And then we bet this Golgari version. So the budget deck actually took down like Mono Red, which was quite nice. Um, Footlight Fiends were actually very impressive in that matchup. So opponents on the play. It does make things go a bit quicker for them. Um... I'm gonna mulligan this hand. It really doesn't do much. Or you know what, let's try. So the thing here, like, I can play this, play oven on one, priest on two, hopefully find another creature and claim on three. Do that. See if we can take him out that way there. The nice thing is this deck's pretty quick. Temple, temple, temple. What are you? Opponent is going real slow. So we didn't want to draw more lions. This deck's had some weird disparity with lions. We've either drawn way too many or not enough. So team or adventures. That actually works out great because if they don't have an answer this turn, to which I'm very much excited to get uh, stomped here, so if they don't answer this this turn, I can play a land, play Mire Trade, and steal something, and then uh, force them to stack. So ideally, it would just be land, play out this Love Struck Beast. Perfect. So that, that kind of just deals with the board right now. Which you're on nothing but lands just to really offset the situation here. Okay, so it's not bad. We drew another priest. Or we got Wolf Strider in there. Um You can still block, doesn't really matter what we steal here. Actually, I can just sack this, get a food token. Gets me closer to having another creature. I think I want the card draw more. And it gets this off the battlefield. Priest of Forgotten Gods really isn't that good in this matchup. They go so wide. 
that it's not really something. I think just off this hand. If we draw like another line, I'm probably just going to concede this first match for time. They hit Clover. They're going to get a lot of value. Like, they can bounce my entire board. The one nice thing is with the Witch's Ovens, I can stop the... I can't tell if we have too many or not enough lines in this deck because the other games we've been stuck on two for a while. And we don't have enough lands in the graveyard for Woe Strider. So how the copies work is if the first doesn't resolve, then um, it doesn't get to finish the resolution, so the adventure spell falls away to the graveyard. So what they should have done first was target us with the original, and then target uh, Bone Crusher, because now this goes to the graveyard. That does give us enough to get back this Woe Strider next turn. It's usually good to keep the food hanging around. My lord, way too many lines. Since we already have another priest there, I'm probably just gonna sack this food, or this uh, creature that we get to scry this turn. We need some action. So we've drawn eight lands. Um, I think again we just, or right, one sec, let's go you, sacrifice this, sack this, just not let them have creatures, because then they can't present the clock. Like we would get it back to our hand. So we've drawn eight lands so far. They're just going to double Fey here. Probably some sort of removal. Maybe an Aether Gust. Oh, that, that makes sense. Just set yourself up for next turn, draw a bunch of cards. Turn to nature just for one of my ovens. So that's actually not bad because it fills the graveyard a bit. Their turn's probably just this escape to the wilds, get some extra lands, maybe some sort of bounce effect. Need four cards. We have two in the graveyard. I can get this Mire trade in, in there if need be. Yeah, now they're going to kind of go off. They have another Escape of the Wilds, too. Other oh, Beanstalk and then Escape of the Wilds. So probably, like, I honestly just want, like, a cat. Cat seems good. Like, they're going to get a bunch of mana next turn. Cat lets me start dealing damage to them. I can also block with the surplus of food. I think that's fine. Sweet. So I can start machine gunning some stuff down if need be. If 
we can get a cat, it wouldn't be too bad. So this turn they're going to go Clover, play the Clover. They have six points of burn off the Bone Crusher, so let them target stuff. They can probably clear my board, but then I'll sack to kill stuff. They ought to go land first. The thing is too, after all these, they get so much mana and they thin out their deck so much that they tend to just draw gas. So like our opponent's seen, doesn't really work as well for the opponent's side. Beanstalk. Um, it's just game three. I'll just put a point of damage there. So they lost the thing, which doesn't really make much sense. I think we just passed the turn here. They could go second Beanstalk. But like I have a Mire Trident to death touch this Beanstalk Giant. I hate playing against this matchup. They don't win fast, and they just, they spin their wheels so much. So they can make a lot of 1-1s, one I can shoot them down. I'm gonna kill this. I don't want them to draw cards. So they're gonna get a bunch of 1 1s. We're at 27 life. We got 30 cards in library, so. They do have a 5 5 now. Let's see if they just attack in with the giant. Try to take them off one ones here. So it's not a terrible draw. So they sack a creature here. Then I could take out one more of those. This lets me take this out. So these bone crushers can't attack just yet. Mine for the turn, um, so they're going to double up here, triple up. This could just be Chandra, wipe my board. Could put a couple points of damage in. They do get 14 in 15 with this. If they have a one drop, then they kill us. Expansion Explosion. Oh, they're just going to double fling me. And Domri's Ambush. So they're just going to fight. So I fizzle the spell on the stack. So they're going to try to answer my whole board here. I hate playing against adventures. So 
Just put the damage on the face here. I'm surprised they didn't opt to uh, copy it to get rid of this Death Toucher because that's what's holding him back from attacking. Well, they have another one of these so they just get their 1-1s one back. So this matchup we bring in the Noxious Grasps. So this stops them from drawing cards. Why doesn't it? I thought that would stop if Fizzles the first half. You have to have a target. If it loses the target, I might be wrong. I'm surprised they had the win. You just play this, play at the 1 ones, and then attack in. You had 10 damage. Or you at least kind of pretty much bring me out of range. Yeah. Opponent realizes it now. Don't think we have anything to get out of here, so they got that one. Um, so grasps are fine in this matchup. Scorching dragon fires are okay. Play epic downfall. This is converted mana cost three or more. So coming out. Footlight Fiends aren't particularly good. Claim's decent. I don't think Priest is that good in this matchup. It's very slow, just gets bounced. Timer it's fine. I think everything else is okay. Question is, do we want these Remorse? They do gain a lot of card value. This is decent with the Death Touch. Wolf Strider's fine, it stops the stack from coming, claim's fine. I think we just run it like this. The thing is there's it. Like we could get lucky and maybe turn two, get a clover out of them, but if we draw it any other time, like they don't put a lot of things in their hand. Mm. I don't know I don't think we play that hand. This hand's also Pretty awful, you know. I'm gonna just fire up another game. I want to demo the deck, and mulling to five is not a good demonstration of it. The first hand, if we had a red source, and I guess we could keep, but just going turn two Meyer trade in into potentially a turn three plays, a little weak. We didn't have really the other pieces. We'll play one more with this, just since we kind of lost like half of that game. Usually in these budget build series, I want to be playing more for a demonstration purpose as opposed to, you know, snaking out the last 10%. Um, we're not playing on the rank ladder. There's not really that nuance when we can hop into another game. The opponent was playing a little slow anyways. They wasted 10 minutes a clock in that game and we're missing some clean li clear lines. Yeah, we'll keep this hand. If we can get a sack outlet, then we are in business. And there we go. So I just need a line drop. This might be mono black devotion. Okay, so intrinsically more powerful, better in the abstract. I do want them to take this and leave me this. Based on the configurations in my hand, I'd rather have Woe Strider. Okay, so they take the Woe Strider. So like those last games, we are flooding out. Now I can't hit a, a third land, even though keeping two. 43% chance hitting a land. Man, untapped GG is such a great tool. Just looking at percentages, breakdowns, stuff like that. So there goes the devil. So this is probably mono black devotion of some sort. Seems to be the more discard heavy version. Might 
as well just get the points of damage in there. Okay, so we hit another Woe Strider. Fortunately, we also hit the Lion that we need. Okay, so we can't steal the Nightmare Shepherd. But I can force them to sack it. So that puts two, we'd get two more, so then I could Woe Strider next turn. So next turn what we do is steal their creature if we can, which we can steal that. So we do this. an exile I mean if that's your turn that's your turn hit for a bunch so sack these two the death touch on this is more relevant. Say go. So I have one more sack. So if they play out another small creature, we can take that. Okay, they play Citadel. Doesn't quite do it. Okay, so this is what we do. Attack in here. This deals two damage. And then we win. And we never see. <laughs> we were drawing lines for a while. Okay, so we took Devotion down there. Um, so this matchup here. I think the Agonizing Remorse can be reasonable as well as the dragon fire. These footlight fiends aren't particularly good. Um, Rampage was fine there. We got five cuts. Calls to the dead could probably come out. Doesn't do too much. Do I want the epic downfall? Probably not. I think we want to be more aggressive. Mire Traden's Fine, maybe cut a mire trade in. The priest was decent there. Maybe we just on the play cut a priest and cut a claim. Just go like that. Yeah, let's run it like that. I think on the draw, I'll bring in like a more aggressive. Maybe I should have brought the, the that extra removal in, at least on the play. Like with that, then we get a little bit more value. I think for devotions, I might try it out again, but adding fires. I just found that you're only ever playing one spell a turn and you can't build out that critical mass. And especially with all the bouncing that's happening right now. Oy. Even a one lander, I would keep this. Okay, we'll keep this. Okay, so. Already a better draw for the opponent. The nice thing is Meyer Trident can trade with the Knight pretty well. Let's see if they have Agonizing Remorse here. Dreadhorde Invasion. Probably would have liked both of those. Actually, yeah, probably both. This gets big enough. So the nice thing is too, if this gets big enough, I can just steal it and then sack it and then they can take more damage. 
I'm a thousand percent taking this trade. Do I? Yeah, yeah, I do. No follow up also bodes well. But we got a cat, then we're going off. Okay. Okay. Hello and good luck. So this is definitely a sack this on the block and get cat back and then just go to town with cat. Uh, so they can start getting light. No, I think we just do this with the cat for now. Getting that cat out of the graveyard. And this is the nice thing with Meyer trading. You can kind of mill over your cats. Okay, so they have a Yara. So I'm going to hold back on the cat. We're not attacking with it anyways. If I draw a Midnight Reaper, then I can do some sacks to... Midnight Devil, whatever the hell the dude's name is. Mayhem Devil. So I'm going to be able to draw some cards here, which is nice. They Grey Merchant me. I'm still in it, so it's not too bad. I want to be able to steal this. Actually, probably steal a Yara. Black notably can't really get rid of artifacts. So we'll get the cap back. I'm gonna take the two points here. Although getting our Yara off the battlefield is something we'd be interested in. I just think presently we want to draw some cards. Okay, so that's nice. We can see what's happening in our opponent's hand. We'll take the two points of damage here. I go Cry a Carnarium. All creatures get each exile each creature card in order that were put into the battlefield this turn. So we're gonna lose the cat, so might as well draw some cards. Okay, so we got the Mayhem Devil. So I might want to keep this food. Yeah, I think we keep the food. So not blocking there proved to be a little bit of an issue. To be completely honest, I wasn't planning on playing around that. Let's get rid of the Murderous Rider. Second Ayara makes sense while they were so aggressive to Trade it off, so I'm gonna go Woe Strider next turn. So apply some damage here. They do lose their bigger creature, so it sets them back a bit. Like they gained a life here. But now I can take them off this again.
I could play second Ayara out. I think we just Woe Strider. We put we took out Tyramaret, so I'm not too worried about it. Don't want lines here. So I did that main so I can attack in. We've already seen that they play um, Bolas of Citadel. So I want them to not have that high of a life total. And then that would allow them to just block. It seems like they're inclined to getting the card draw each or the life gain each turn. Do have so not enough to get Wolf Strider back. So like Murderous Rider. So this Murderous Rider is going away anyways. So the question, I think I want to scry more than I want the food. So they can tap this down to draw a card. Murderous Rider is not going to resolve as an ability. Scorching Dragonfire Sweet. Keep you on top. So my guess is, so this turn, because we know they have the second Ayara, they may block, they don't. That's interesting. Um, do I want to get rid of Ayara? They take some damage, they don't gain the life. Also takes them... So they can play out the second Ayara here. But they take the damage off it now. They don't get no life. Second Dread Horde. Uh, I'm gonna hang on to that. Just force them into damage here. Because they're going to take two a turn but only gain one life. It keeps them small enough as well. These seem particularly risky against, uh, they just seem bad really against the current, like Teferi and Brazen Borer. Just constantly bounce your tokens. Okay, so they sack with the trigger on the stack. They get the draw a card. Nullifies the life, but now they are open to take three damage. We do go to game three. We know that the cry is something we need to be mindful of, so not to overextend. And I do probably want that other removal in. This is only possible because of Ayara. Alright, so let's see what our outs are. We have two claims, which we probably want to go back up to the full claims. Two claims, one dragon fire, so 8%. 
They massacre a girl. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'll keep both. That works out really well. So we'll just sack here. I could have done it before it came in, which I probably should have because then it didn't get that additional trigger. But it ended up working out okay for us because now we just do this. And then we play out the cat. We have to do that now instead of getting back Woe Strider because then they would have the tokens that they could sacrifice in lieu. So unless they have Cry Carnarium, but in any case we deal a good chunk of damage. Okay, so trigger on the stack. Actually, that's fine, because we just get it back with the cat now. We have the food tokens, so we can get that back. So timer it comes down. So they only have one activation. So they can activate, the, they're going to get rid of our Woe Strider. But because I have these two foods, it works out. And they gain two life. But we have uh, six damage coming in. So it's a little mechanical. Yeah, opponent sees it and that wraps it up. So took him out there, pretty nice overall. Did we have fun? Yes, we had fun. We bet our opponent. So I'm gonna wrap this one up. Uh, two and one with the deck, uh, not too shabby overall. Um, so we'll come back with the non-budget version and wrap it up from there. Otherwise, thanks for stopping by and have yourself a great one.